I guess. <laughs> Note the shirt, change of. <laughs> and we are colour coordinated with mine. It is uh, a little bit earlier today. We've been doing our FaceTime YouTubes later in the afternoon. But there was something that I wanted to bring to everybody's attention. You're all so wonderful coming on, all of you light workers. I said this a very long time ago. You know, the, the light workers need to know that, the, you know, the source of the light is here. And um, Donna, it, it, it's you darling, Donna Summers, um, you left a comment a couple of hours ago and just said, uh, FYI, Gary Larrabee is in the hospital with heart issues. Now, for that, we are, uh, we are sad to yeah. hear that. Uh, Gary seems like just a, a sweet man. Does anybody know how old Gary is? Like, what year? Does anybody know his birthday? Just as a curiosity. Um, but what I wanted to do yesterday, but we, we had too much fun, is that there is a warning for today. And I have issued this you know, years ago from Rome, and I, I reiterate it on occasions. And so it's appropriate today that uh, we just go through the prophecy, really, that applies today. And because Yar is the Comforter, who is the Holy Ghost, who is the Father, <coughs> it really was a caveat from um, mm. before the cross. He spoke these words as a warning, an admonition before he went to the cross. And they apply today. And this is why I'm always uh, kind of reissuing the warning. And I had to do this for Pope Benedict as well, before he began his communications with Yah via the live emails. I did warn him that it applies today. There's no room for rejection of the Holy Ghost or even speaking against the Holy Ghost. Yah does not have to even be aware of it. But, you know, people coming across his work and then, then call, cursing him, calling him this, that and the other, um, they really do condemn their own soul because that is the prophecy. Uh, so I read this to you. This is from Matthew chapter 12 and it's starting in verse, verse 30. This applies today. And it says, He that is not with me is against me. And he that gathereth not with me scattereth abroad. And then he said, Wherefore I say unto you, All manner of sin and blasphemy shall be forgiven unto men, but the blasphemy against the Holy Ghost shall not be forgiven unto men. And then it goes on in verse 32. And whosoever speaketh a word against the Son of Man, well, he was the Son of God, but let's just take it as it is written. So we're talking about Jesus. Whosoever speaketh a word against the Son of Man, it shall be forgiven him. But whosoever speaketh against the Holy Ghost, it shall not be forgiven him, neither in this world, so we're talking about 33 AD, neither in the world to come which is this time now. Now, first of all, I would point out to you that the world is the geopolitical construct that we are living in. So the world then was the, the Roman world of the governorship, but it was the Jews who, who crucified him, etc. The world today is the same dudes back because they have all reincarnated into various positions as the leaders. So the, the geopolitical construct of the world is the same. So that was the warning then. It will not be forgiven the one who speaks against the Holy Ghost. And of course that is Yahweh, Jesus, Brian, and go lightly Marshall. Now it's with sadness that we hear that Harry is, Larry, rather, Gary, is having heart issues in hospital. Uh, I think I mentioned on yesterday's PowerPoint, you know, he devoted three minutes to it in 32 and then he's uploading BS information about Francis, etc. For that, we were astonished. 
because the attention should have been all out for himself to uh, pursue the truth that he'd been given. Also, I noted that um, in his presentation, he just put the link without saying anything about it in the description box over to uh, the announcement that's made by Gabe. Gabe is a real person who's, who's <laughs> undercover, if you like, but he's the one living it. And he knows firsthand the rejection because that news has been delivered personally to uh, all of Rome, practically, on the streets. And so he put together that brilliant presentation um, with his own means, which are scarce, to get through to the mindset of today's world that, you know, loves Hollywood-style presentations and is about the only thing that they actually retain. And so, you know, Gabe's, that, that video should have been highlighted, go here to read for yourself, something like that, because even though Gary's had more than 5,500 views on his 32-minute video, there's only 1,700 uh, that went over and clicked on, on Gabe's video. And I realised when Yah told me that he just kept quoting the scriptures after he'd announced the news, that he's actually coming against the Word of God uh, using the book that everybody's trapped in. What I should have said was, look, I'll check it out. Hmm. Right? Maybe give the guy a call or get me on the phone talk to me. Right? right. He starts jabbling on about scriptures, which is most of it's bullshit, and um, piss me off. Now, unfortunately, to give an example of that, <clears throat> my brother and sister, I gave them an opportunity right up until just before they died, and I said, listen, this is it, this is your last chance. So my brother scoffed at it, and now he has seen hundreds of miracles when he's been with me as my brother. When I was a child in particular, I can verify all the things that I spoke about when I was two years of age. And uh, so uh, that was it. And he died shortly after. And then uh, my sister, uh, I gave her the opportunity. Now she wanted to be a, she's a sort of a closet lesbian and got no uh, spiritual backbone at all. And um, that's it. She said she didn't want to talk to me now. Mm. So, well, that's the end of it. And she, just after that, she died. Right. So, um, the same thing happened with the stepfather. Um, he was particularly nasty right up until the very end, and I said, that's it. I stuck it. And he died. So, in other words, when I washed my hands of it, uh, they got a problem. My nephew, for example, he uh, called me up and uh, attacked me physically. And that was what I said to him. I said, that's the end of you, son. And uh, I walked out and shortly after that he was shot dead. Four slugs to the back Four of the head. Four slugs in the back of the head. The, the protection removed. Yeah, protection um, removed. Yeah. And again, to, to, to clean this up, because this is, this is the seriousness of the days that we are living in, uh, on our video from several days ago, we were so delighted that Cindy had uploaded and and uh, was scrolled through as she did in Christum Credent and in Declaration and Notice to Claim. And we were delighted. Good on you! Wow, well done. How, you know, finally somebody with an audience. Um, however, it was uh, that was one day. Now this is interesting because the very next day, and I'm not. It was no, about a week ago. But uh, Yah had a dream early in the morning. He just said, I've had a strange dream, and he told me the dream, which I'll tell you in a moment. Uh, and okay, because he does, he ha has dreams, and actually, dreams were a big part of the trail that I followed until I found him. He was giving me information. So he told me the dream, and then I went, um, because he was excited about, you know, how many views has Cindy's video had now? Because that means that, that many more people have heard the news that has been suppressed all of this time. So we were excited. Um, I, I went to find out uh, my iPad, and of course our faithful, it was uh, one of our very faithful who's been just doing her best in London under all kinds of opposition. Um, she sent me a message and she, she, she just said, Cindy's, Cindy's, she said, Cindy's gone psycho. 
she's saying that she's going to arrest Yar and that he's impotent and all this kind of thing. So, um, and she said, I, I joined you to the Facebook page that, uh, of the group. So anyway, I got it all together, came downstairs to find out what was going on. <laughs> anyway, in this conversation that I, I have screen captured, and there's more of it that I, I haven't bothered, but the, the part where she and I were communicating, and then Yah was as well, um, I have screen captured all of that. Well, in that, she has called him the laser coward and the um, panty waist, I still don't know what is, and uh, the, the impotence was about, uh, uh, like, because he was high, oh, that's right, the inference was that she wasn't going to talk to me because uh, he's just hiding behind one of his skirts, you know. <laughs> anyway, I'm his wife and, and his right-hand man, his best man is a woman. Um, how, so anyway, this went on and we just responded, okay, and Yara actually did come over and through my Facebook page was communicating with her. At first she didn't believe it and <laughs> until I came back and said, Cindy, that was Yara. You can always tell Yara. It might be all capital letters or there might be typos or whatever that he doesn't bother correcting. <laughs> I'm pedantic. <laughs> Anyway, this went on, and uh, we were all a bit stunned about this great about face, mm. if you like. Now, I will tell you the, the dream, because it was after this about face that somebody who has known uh, Cindy for, for years and was following her for years, uh, she actually tried to warn me that this may happen. Um, apparently, it's about power plays, and she likes to, whatever it is. Um, but I, I'll just tell you the dream. The, the, Yah told me that he was flying around in his old aeroplane, the one, uh, if you've been following, he, he talks about and the adventures, and it's all part of Pope Benedict's stories that he loved to hear. But he was flying around in his aeroplane, and he noticed two other aeroplanes. One of them was an old aeroplane flying around, and behind it was a, uh, like a Lear jet plane. Anyway, he, he's watching this scene go on, and correct me to get the details right, babe, but the, the old aeroplane landed, kind of pop, pop, pop. It was struggling a bit, and it landed. So Yar lands his plane, and he goes to find the pilot of the old plane that, that landed. You know, it was a bit of a struggle. Are you okay, mate? Kind of checking to see that, you know. Yeah, he was fine. He was okay. And then he watched... The, this time the Learjet that was struggling to land, but it did land, and he said it was Grace Kelly who walked into where Yara is now watching this scene, and she walks over to embrace him and whispers into his ear, um, was it just pretend that you pretend know you me, know. pretend that you know me for the sake of the others who were on the Learjet that were watching. Okay, so he said it was just really strange. It was Grace Kelly. <laughs> All right, okay. Now, this is what I responded to the one who warned me about what may happen. Is that All right, who was Grace Kelly? First of all, she was very beautiful. People thought she was very beautiful to look at because she was very beautiful. Uh, however, she was an actress and she is dead. I want to tell you uh, that an actor, its true meaning is a hypocrite. Now, Grace Kelly herself, Yah knows that she was what? <laughs> she was a very, very immoral woman. An immoral woman. Mm. But she did marry the Prince of Monaco, Prince Rainier. So she's married into royalty. Uh, now, what happened was that she walked into the hangar, so we've got this dead actress who uh, was a harlot and married into royalty, she's walked over to embrace Yah, you know, like, just, just pretend that you know me for the sake of the people, like the passengers in the Learjet. Now, a Learjet, of course, represents what? Money and mm. power. Mm. So, the <laughs> interpretation is that this, this one... Uh, Cindy, from what I was told as the background, because again we knew nothing about her, is that her power plays, uh, she's a hypocrite first of all, and she's playing this part, and, and 
I do know that people who follow her think that she's wonderful and she's this beautiful light work, whatever. Uh, however, Queen of the world. <laughs> oh, she, she, she did call herself Queen of the World, etc. However, she too has blasphemed the Holy Ghost. And she, what it, she has publicly done this. It's on her Facebook page for the world to read. Mm. Now, it was only yesterday again that the one who had forewarned me about these power plays that come about from, from Cindy um, is that uh, the one faithful one that's remained quite close to her, who is also looking at you and going, oh my God, um, is that has said that there is something wrong with Cindy uh, since these events. So again, don't know. You know, we're, we're not. You know, we're not watching her or anything like that. We we actually don't watch other people's videos uh, unless they are brought to our attention. And even then, sometimes we don't. Like it was BS. Just why would we? As I said, Yara's source and all of his information is to do to bring your mind back to the reality of feet of clay on the earth and the Father is here. Of course, we, you know, he watches documentaries and uh, uh, he's able to tell what's true, what's not, that kind of thing. But we don't follow people for their information. Um, I will tell you this in my, because I had to find him, I, 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 I had this journey as well. The, the last <laughs> rabbit hole along the way was um, about the paradigm shift and I'm, I'm pretty sure it was galactic, whatever it is, information. That was like the, the last rabbit hole along the way. So by the time I found him, so I was able to tick off all of these rabbit holes and I go, okay, uh, right, 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 right. So until I find the old, and then you can lay it all down. Um, so this is the warning. This is serious. And people, you know, the Learjet position of influence and all the people that she's carrying around in her Learjet and uh, supposedly, we were told, but supposedly she's bullied this dude in Indonesia that calls himself M1, who's supposed to be the king of kings in, in their world. Well, you know, like, if we're talking about the gold from Solomon, it'll be worthless in the kingdom. And uh, it's all... Be the if these people were true, they would be looking at Yara and saying, hey, listen, I've got this. What are we going to do with it? What do you want done? That's the reality of it. You lay it all down. Um, so, two, that's just the warning for, for everybody's sake. And um, I, I would... I can't do a thing about it, by the way. Yes. See, it's all angelic. Mm. This is a prophecy spoken by Jesus of the Holy Ghost, which is God that was the father of Jesus in the virgin womb of Mary. So it says, the Comforter will come. Who is the Holy Ghost? The Comforter, of course, is identified by the position of the planets on January the 1st of this year. This is the comforting year where I can make some headway. Because this is the earthly realm is hell, because God isn't here. So it's a matter of the people that wake up that accept the reality that uh, everyone will eventually be forced to because there's no alternative. Mm. So I'm battling the beast for you on your behalf and I'm trying to give you the information that I can um, through this media that um, I'm here and I'm going to, to do it. It's not an election, it's just going to be done. So um, I was never so inclined to put these things up. I don't go out walking up and down the street looking for people to convert. I, mm -hmm. I don't do that. No, I never that. have. <laughs> Uh, but it becomes the soul inspiration. Now, pick that up there and read that one there, Matthew 28, 19. Yes, Matthew 28, 19 is, Go ye therefore and teach all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Ghost. Right. And uh, from Mark 1, 8, I indeed have baptized you with water, but he shall baptize you with the Holy Ghost. That's now. So, this is the, um, what it all means. If you go to the last one there, Mark 3.29. Well, that, that's the one of that. But he that shall blaspheme against the Holy Ghost hath never forgiveness, but is in danger of eternal damnation. That's, that's what it means. That's what the word Holy Ghost means. Yes. Mean. 
the third person, the Holy Ghost is the third person of the triune God. Um, that is a mistranslation. Right, so the Holy Ghost. The Holy Ghost, co equal, co eternal with the Father and the Son, because it's the same soul. The spiritual nature of Christ, higher than the highest angels and equal to God, the divine nature of Christ. Right, so that was Jesus then. Now we're talking about the Holy Ghost coming to the earth, which was the Father, and is the comfort of Jesus. Right. Now the Muslims have got that right, ironically. What they haven't got right, they don't believe in the crucifixion and the resurrection. Well, it's, it's been altered, the, the Quran. For example, in Afghanistan, where all this trouble is over there fighting these, these Muslims, the CIA is the ones that put together the Quran for them and then distribute it covertly throughout the nation. So people who are growing up and they want to create a Quran, they get one, they have no idea that the CIA put it all together. Mm. And this is where you get the jihadists that want to go to war. Is that what Muhammad said? So one day we'll talk about Muhammad. Well, you will find them. Uh, there's, been, there's plenty of videos and I know that you, as truth, it, it's marvellous mm. because the, the, the light workers are the truth seekers and they, they, you're, you're going to dig in and see the videos that have already been. That's, this is why he's done them. First video upload was December 20th, 2006. So again, there's, there's been thousands and there's out there and others have uploaded. Mm -hmm. We would encourage all of those who do have your own YouTube channels, please do download and re-upload to your own channels. That's what our faithful few have been doing who, who have the ability to do that. So now we'll, we'll move on to happier things uh, because your comments are coming in. And what about this? Oh, well, well this me, is the most important piece of writing. Let, let, let me go, read this first because this is in tune with our um, Aloha. Aloha, <laughs> everybody. <laughs> our, our, our Hawaiian fine D. I, I, I just used that word last night. You, you, you are all fine Ds. <laughs> they found us. Beloved Mother Asher and Father Time, it's divine time to try something new. Absolutely right. Throughout the years, I've had my own business and have designed my own marketing materials using Vistaprint. We know it well. <laughs> they have a beautiful selection of marketing materials which have been quite successful in terms of establishing clients. Prior to meeting you and Yah, I had a calling to work with the angelic realms. However, upon meeting you and Yahweh, it has become clear that my calling is to spread the word of Jesus Christ's return via Yah's reincarnation. And so she's had a thought about getting the good news out there, that reincarnated as the father and comfort of BLGM and talking about PowerPoint presentations and a couple of the scriptures. Now, this is so true, you, you, um, because straight is the gate and narrow is the way which leadeth unto life, and few there be that find it. That's from Matthew 7.11. Well, you know, the straight gate is here, finding Yah and tuning into his teachings, which are, are very logical and uh, intelligence. Is uh, love is the highest form of intelligence. So his logic again is very grounding for the mind of man that has been hijacked, and that's his task this time. As the Father Isaiah 63, I think it's verse 11, talks about that the strength of man. Well, the strength of man is his mind, and it really is bringing it back down to terra firma, feet of clay. As you, <laughs> I mean. At times, Yah shakes his head at me because I understand where a lot of you are coming from. We, we've all had that journey of... Um, um, I remember at one period of time, it, it got so intense with the information coming in that my mind was taking over my body. I turned into this <laughs> skinny cow and because my mind was so occupied with what was being shared, it was heavenly downloads to prepare me because it was... But you wasn't eating that much. Well, I didn't want to. I didn't want to eat anything. Sure, my effort. <laughs> okay. Well, he calls me the term, right? But anyway, um, the... Uh, yeah, and your mind starts to flip out and go off into all kinds of realms and things start happening to the mind. And it, it can be scary. 
And... Some religious sandwich, by the way. No. Oh, look, he does this. People who've been here know exactly. John Link, you know, don't you? <laughs> he was here. <laughs> um, all right, so, yes. But just as, as our, our beautiful Hawaiian lady is talking about time for something new and uh, printing cards and things like that, is that uh, I said to Yah this morning, I actually wanted him to handwrite it, but he's used the font on uh, the printer. So, bless, and these are the words, his words is Jesus, the only... It is extremely important. Yes. So I thought that these could be the words that... Um, Aloha <laughs> can use as the something new as she's spreading the word. Again, I read it last night in the video, but blessed art thou that has believed in me, not having seen me. Of course, this is written to the king at Agba Edessa. For it is written concerning me that they that have seen me shall not believe in me. And that they that have not seen me shall believe and live. But concerning that which thou hast written to me to come unto thee, it must needs be that I fulfil all things for the which I was sent here. And he's talking about Jerusalem. And after fulfilling them, should then be taken up unto him that sent me. And when I am taken up, I will send thee one of my disciples to heal thine affliction and give life to thee and them that are with thee. Point B, after I'm taken up, I will then tell one of my disciples to take the cloth, the mandiline, to the king and it will heal you. And that's what was talking about the... Uh, yesterday with the DNA that has no time limit and um, is how um, we got onto the idea of uh, making cloths up, mm. which uh, we're going to do today and um, I'll have my DNA on it and all they're going to do is take it and uh, that's it. <laughs> give it to a person that's sick and they'll get better. Right, so uh, let's move on for some more comments and Lady Dixia. <laughs> Lady Dixia, I hope I'm pro uh, pronouncing it properly. Dixia or Dixia? Dixia. Father God himself reincarnated onto the earth. I believe because I heard this and always wondered who is he and now here I am receiving my answer. Thank you God. Now that was uh, left under the video um, uh, with the Benedict photo. What I wanted to do is explain a little bit more about the events um, that surrounded Benedict's announcement. We went through yesterday a little bit. Oh, look, I have to read, because he's a bloke, <laughs> Andy Elliott commented, I can't express my words to show and tell you that I'm so glad to have found you, Yar and my dear mother. <laughs> I'm going through all your videos because I can't get enough of seeing and hearing you both. And then it does continue. I'm just reading the summarized version. If I go over, I'll, I'll lose the stream. So, so good to have you on board, Andy. You're another bloke that's found us. Um, look. I don't know whether you've picked this, this up in previous videos, but you know that Yar is the alpha male, like the only male soul on the planet? That's what the church and the people of the earth is, to marry the alpha male. So I am alpha and omega, beginning and the end, Greek. And uh, it is to do with the Great Pyramid, it lays it out pretty uh, spectacularly in the measurements and the numbers that prove and give my birth date and etc. Um, and um, the outside of the pyramid is the missing garment. That's the wedding garment. And because it's missing, the capstone couldn't be placed because it's not big enough to accommodate the capsized capstone, which is the full size. So um, that's what that's all about. 
So the idea is that all 144,000 come in because there's 144,000 pure white um, stones that were placed around the building um, and um, polished pure white as a wedding dress. And then the capstone can fit because the wedding dress makes the size of the summit platform out large enough for the capstone to fit. That's what it's all about. So uh, I've written on that many, many times. Uh, so I <laughs> just have a do it again. Can, can you imagine being back in today, you know, 33 AD, and Yars, you know, slamming these high priests and all the rest of it? He's, he's telling them that they're all females. Well, they hate that, especially the Jews. See, um, up until I was two, four, two, four days old, when I got back to um, uh, Nazareth area, Carmel, uh, from a baby I'd been in Egypt, and I'd been in the Great Pyramid many times. I spoke to the priests there, I knew all about it. Right. So uh, it's just instinctively, because I was already God in the flesh, being the Holy Ghost, anyhow, conceived in Mary, that all these things um, I just knew by going near it, walking up to it, touching it, I just know it. Right. As I said, I spoke about this before when my brother and I were speaking about the seven wonders of the world and I asked him which were the old and the new and he sort of a bit confused and I said which was the one monument that was in both the old and the new, two years of age. Right? It was in Rosebury at the time. I left when I was 942 days old, so I'm working out. So um, he went to school and verified that what I told him was true that it's the Great Pyramid is in both the old seven wonders of the world and the new seven wonders of the world. So you'd have to say, how does a two-year-old baby know these things? How do I know Einstein's theory of relativity is wrong? Right? Things like that. So I, this is my brother who really, for all those years up until 2011, uh, finally I got the shits with him. I said, that's it, you're out of here. I couldn't do any more. Mm. And he then died. And went straight to hell. Uh, he set himself as a child. He set himself a very low moral uh, standard and had the great difficulty living up to it. He was a monster. Child molester, went to brothels in Malaysia. And that's all he talked about. Yeah, there's another comment from somebody new, Cheryl Callahan. She says, best day of my life today, Love knowing it. our comforter is here. Brian Leonard, <laughs> go softly. Go You're softly. Hey. <laughs> are they, are they typos? Right, <laughs> go, go softly, Matt Shell. <laughs> Matt Shell is here. <laughs> all right. Oh, uh, okay, we'll put those down as typos. It's all good. And then um, uh, Donna Juanita, um, you commented again. Can I you love please? her name, Juanita. Juanita, yes. Juanita, Donna. Can you please recommend a good book on numerology? I gave up all my books on astrology when I converted. Was this the right thing to do? I had the realization that astrology can be a form of self something. Um, again, just reading the summary. Be uh, careful with astrology because it's all to do with Jesus, Holy Ghost, Christ, the Father. Yes. That's what it's all about. And it's all told in the stars. So doing your horoscope is not a good idea. Right. Uh, now, look. The, as the world understands uh, numerology, actually... Well, the strongest concordance is where your numbers are for the Bible. Yes, the, the Jack, have, can you get the concordance, the physical one, where is it? Um, <coughs> it could be in the bottom drawer no, of the filing cabinet, but just, yeah, now, um, it can be very confusing, but when we talk about the numbers, we're talking about Yah's numbers. Like everything is recorded within the measure of his creation. So the, the physical earth uh, that we walk on, terra firma, is the book that opens up that only he can read because that's what he measures. Now once he gets a measure, whether it be nautical miles, statute miles, kilometres, whatever, he's got a number. And the what is holy is the inspired James Strong's Concordance Dictionary Listing of the King James Bible 1611, where a team of academics were divinely inspired to list all of the numbers in the Hebrew Old Testament 
8,674 words, and then the Greek New Testament, 5,624 words. So when Yah gets a measure of the earth, <laughs> this is an immense book, but the beauty of it is, um, it's the one that's in most English-speaking libraries. Yes. Uh, if you go online, there's uh, other uh, concordances which have more words in them. But the point with this one is eight, six, seven, four words in the Old Testament that is listed. Now, it didn't list words like and, the, the and common, they, yeah. and common words. It didn't listen. No need to. Um, so what it means is the beauty of that particular book is they are in most libraries. Now the Jews have taken over most libraries mm. and anything that's pertaining to the truth that I'll be talking about, they'll be promoting evolution. You can't get anything on giants, for example. Yet the Smithsonian Institute in the 1930s, one of the uh, governors of the institute uh, had kept a femur bone which was about six foot long of a giant because what the Jews had done was taken over the administration and the the running of the uh, institute in Washington. And uh, anything that would come in, so far as giants were concerned, they'd get rid of the bones because it lines up with the Bible saying there were giants in those days, which is true, there were giants in those days. Very big. In the Bible, for example, King Og had a bed that was 14 feet long. If you go into uh, the word maximum, that word comes from a uh, a uh, emperor of Rome who was eight foot six inches tall and his name was Maximus. So that's where the word maximum comes from. So it's things like that. Now the point of that is eight, six, seven, four words. So if you say, well, let's call it something else, like call it years, right? How many days is that? Let's call it eight point six seven four years. Doesn't matter what the decimal point is, but just to simplify it. That is 3168 days. Now in Greek, 3168 in the Gematria, right? So you take your name and you can convert that to English Gematria. Well, in the Greek, it's a little bit different. You've got the first eight, uh, ten letters, isn't it? How many letters? Eight letters. But there's 24 altogether, so there's three groups of, three groups of eight. eight. You think I know, don't you? Well, would you like me to? You do. Uh, all right. In, in, when he says, I'm the Alpha and the Omega, this is a big clue in the Revelation. Well, Alpha is the first letter of the uh, Greek alphabet and Omega is the last letter. So it was a clue. Think of it as a blues clue. Here's a clue. So he's going to, in the end of time, that's what the Revelation is all about, he's going to be using the Greek alphabet, Gematria, Alpha and Omega and everything in between. Shall I put my glasses on so I don't poke my eye yet? Oh, well, no. well. I can't get up there that high. Anyway, close. All right, so the first group of eight letters have a value of one through eight. This is in the Greek alphabet. The next group of eight letters have a value of 10 through to 80. And then the third group have a value of 100 through to 800. Oh, I now, that. Jesus, I, Isus, in Greek, the value of the letters is 888, 888. Now, the value of Lord... It's a trinity. The eight is infinity, three times. Right. The, the value of Lord is 800. The value of the word Christ is 1480. So when you add 800, 888, and 1480, it totals 3168. So you have Lord Jesus Christ in Greek gematria. So any time you see that, you go, aha! We're talking about Lord Jesus Christ. These are all the codes, if you like, that only Yah can find, first of all, because it's all about the measuring and the reading of the book, which is the earth. So, the tools he used is the James Strong's Concordance, and yes, the King James 1611 Bible, not for the words that they are speaking, but for the number values of the words and the chapter and verses, etc., and then he will tell you what is true and what is not. For example, uh, the four, you've got five books of the Torah, but the four books, you've got Exodus and uh, Deuteronomy, Numbers mm. and Leviticus, they're, they're disgusting. And the, this is Babylonian. It's a construct out of Babylon. 
And that's what's got the whole Christian churches bullshitted because <clears throat> they think that's the word of God. It isn't. No. It's a murderer. And Jesus, I said, right? No one has seen the Father. No one has heard the Father. If you've seen the Father, you've seen me. Okay. So if you see Jesus, you've seen the Father. Because the Father and I are one. Mm. Who the hell was Moses <laughs> talking to? It's and we get to the point, like if you go through the and I haven't done this, I'm only taking other people's word for this, how many times God of Moses is talking to him. Yablon on day after bloody day, do this, do that. Hey, he's picking up stones Yabalon. on the Sabbath, take the bastard out and stone him to death. Oh, right. Can you imagine, right. you know... Can you imagine God of love doing that? Come on. Right. What for picking up stones? Anyway, picking up sticks uh, on the Sabbath. Look, is another, a uh, punishment. another question was too. What about the Ten Commandments? Oh, we haven't finished. Oh, Stop. Sorry about. This strong records eight six seven four words. That's the age that Benedict was on my seventieth birthday. And on my seventieth birthday, we're sitting out the back here. I said, we had our friends well, come over earlier in the day. Earlier yes. in the day, and I said, Ariel Sharon's going to die today. And that afternoon, he died. Mm. It was 2 p.m. at 10 o'clock here at night when we got the news. A greater monster that never lived. Right. Now, of course, that ties into the Yitzhak Kaduri yeah. prophecy. Yitzhak Kaduri was 108 years old when he died in uh, 2006. He died shortly after Ariel Sharon had the stroke that put him on life support for the next eight years until he finally died. But in Yitzhak Kaduri, now he was entertaining Michael, the heavenly presence, turning up mm. as to give him information what for now and for the ones who are genuinely seeking, you know, of the Jewish faith who are genuinely seeking to find out the truth. And of course his message, coded message, was that Yeshua is the Messiah. Well, that sent horror and shockwaves throughout. Yeah, when I'd like a lead balloon. When right? I, yes, but he, he said it. But he said that the Messiah won't be coming to Israel. He'll be communicating through the media and that he won't be recognised until after the death of Ariel Sharon. Sharon. So that happened on oh. the 70th birthday. Benedict had already made the announcement uh, 10 months before 2013. This is, and so then we uploaded, upload, this is to those in Israel. This is your Messiah speaking to you exactly as Yitzhak Kaduri said that he would. Now, <laughs> Do they get it? Do they believe it? Just because, don't believe him. Because the, the again in in his writings, Kaduri says they'll be going. Oh, you mean that guy? You know, yeah, big, big surprise. <laughs> huh? Like that guy? Because everybody knows about Yah, the world's leaders. They oh, all know about him, but you know, they've ignored him. <laughs> we shall forbid Christ. Now, it was interesting. I sent something this morning um, where. Uh, I think it was a still report, and he was mentioning that uh, um, Putin was talking about how um, the Christian world has been devastated and uh, what's, what it's all about it because it's the Jews. But he also said, mentioning the Jews, he said, Have, you've got to read the Protocols of Zion. Hello? Yeah, this was, this was from the report. Bill still uploaded somebody else's report from that SGT channel which always does a very thorough investigation. Now, it was Putin it was, was talking and said it. Yes, it was Pu No, it wasn't. It, it was. was. It, it was Putin who mentioned the protocols of the learned elders of Zion. Uh, okay, that's it. I'm okay. taking my word for it. She's right. wrong. Alright, okay, great. I'll go and listen to it again make sure. Well, that, you're wrong. Uh, uh, because, yeah, yeah, no, it was Putin's Christmas message, 2016. So with all the BS that's flying around, and it finally Bill still has uploaded something that is uh, intelligent. intelligent, because, again, I have sent him all the information. His wife was really sick uh, just before the election, and she was off for a few days. So, because we were watching the still report, we run up to the election, and another Christian, quoting the scriptures and all the rest of it. So... I sent him this message because he gave the email address, etc., and said, Your wife will be fine. And, and the new name, and, and that the next celebration after the world celebrating the election of President Trump would have to be the announcement to the world that the Christ is here. Um, and of course, no response at all. However, I did note that the very next day, 
that the wife was back, she was restored overnight. So, oh, praise to Jesus. <laughs> anyway, so it's about time that these go. Now, I have to say it, that with all the hoo-ha going on, and the shadow government that uh, Obama is running from his bunker two miles away from the White House, um, I think what has happened is that many, many of you that are watching us have in, in the past been led to believe that um, uh, Trump is the bad guy. Well, he's not. He's, he's, he's trying to do what is right for the people of America whom he has taken on that father figure for. He's, he's, he's the father of you know, beautiful children, lovely grandchildren, and he's thinking of your future as a father does, just like Yah does. Now, has he made the connection with Yah himself? We well, we sent him a message. By the way, he was 70 years, 7 months and 7 days old on the 20th of January this year. And he's two four two four days younger than me, which is Jesus in Greek. Hello. Two four two point four two four years younger. Mm. Yeah, and that's all covered. You you've probably got that understanding now. Not new people coming in. Well, well, yes, because they they're, they're digging deep to get this information, and and they're catching up really fast. So I'm just bringing to your attention now. now you can you see. You think there might be one person that didn't well, know that out there? Yeah. Well, all, all right. Then. That's the one I'm talking. About. Okay. <laughs> The point is that I have noticed a pattern and, and the one who has come in from uh, these other channels has, uh, she's got it thoroughly sorted now because the thinking was that Trump was an evil dude. Well, uh, no, he's Yah's guy. So I hope that's Simon becoming... Putin? Putin, Putin they, 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 they're brothers. This is why Putin is trying to reach out uh, in his messages knowing that a good deal of the American population now will be listening to what he's been saying for a very long time, is these are brothers, these are Christian brothers, and Putin himself has sworn to protect Christianity in the Middle East, which is why he has come alongside Syria. Bashar al-Assad is a saint, and so is his wife. These are beautiful, genuine, real, godly uh, Religious-wise, he's an Eloist, and an Eloist is... Very similar to Christianity, which has its eyes open. Um, it's not a Muslim religion. It's can't call it Christian either. But I did talk to one of his priests that was um, in the same parliament of his father many years ago. And uh, he showed me in the writings of Aramaic what was going to occur in Syria. So you can read the Aramaic and interpret it as this expert would do for me and compare it to that strong concordance I got there. And he'd give me some numbers and I'd compare the numbers what he's given me in Aramaic to um, what I've got in the uh, Greek and Hebrew. And uh, very similar. So definitely Syria was the place where the Jews are going to get even because that was a Syria in the old days which captured Israel. Remember the Jews have got nothing to do with Israel. They're not Israel. Right? They're monsters. So, the capture of the tribes descended from Solomon, and Solomon had separated from Jerusalem and Judah and Benjamin. Benjamin is the area of Jerusalem, and uh, Solomon had separated from that. And that was the ten northern tribes that was taken captive by the king of uh, Nineveh, Syria, Assyria, and then bound them all up and sent them back, or sent them. To Europe and that became the European nation. That's why I said the other day, if you go back before 722 BC looking for anything in Europe, nothing there, there's nothing there. Right. A few wandering tribes. Nothing. So that's where all the Europeans come from. But the um, Europeans under um, Solomon um, had intermarried with the Moabites and the Ammonites, which were the incestuous daughters uh, who produced children of the Ammonite and Moabite tribes on their exit out of Lot um, took them to a cave. His wife had turned around and turned to a pillar of salt. It's a parable, hello. And uh, they got him drunk, and while he was intoxicated, they had sex with him, and they produced the Ammonite and the Moab. Well, that didn't happen. It is a parable. But the Solomon Gomorrah idea is what the offspring of the 700 wives and the concubines 
of Solomon produced, which they, the children, married into the people that would then become the ten tribes and be forced by Assyria to go to uh, live in Europe. And that is why a lot of the elite in uh, the uh, nations of Europe are directly descended from Sodom and Gomorrah. That's where it came from. <laughs> you happy? <laughs> All right, well, just reading out of some more comments. One's oh, from okay. uh, Mary Troka commented, Greetings, I'm not exactly sure how I came across your channel, but I feel it was divine intervention. <laughs> Absolutely no pun intended. For the better part of my life, I have been looking for answers to... Again, thank you, Mary. Again, I'm just reading the summary of, of the comments, but I'll go and read the, the uh, entire comment after this. And uh, good to have you here. Divine intervention, that's what it's all about. We had uh, Karen, Karen who watches, Karen's in Adelaide. Karen in her desperation <laughs> years ago. Her story is uh, that, that she was... She was desperate. You know, you've all had lives that are, you know... Pretty rough. Man. Yes, very rough. And she decided to Google God one day, and that's what she did. She Googled God, and, and up pops one of the eyes videos. And so she was uh, delighted. And Karen spent about... She spent 54 hours on a bus to on get On a bus up. to get here. The Rachel, the, the you, travelling. <laughs> the you's travel mm -hmm. long. And she spent many months here living with us, and it's back in... Adelaide. Um, now, below Mary's comment is another new one. Robert Berry Alt, sounds a little bit French, Robert, um, commented, I was Catholic and then became a Jehovah Witness and got disfellowship. Congratulations, Robert, glad that you did. <laughs> I always believed in God and accepted Jesus Christ as my Saviour. And I came from a, I, I come from a very dysfunctional family and spent over 20 years. And again, it goes on. Um, glad you found us, Robert. Just, just keep absorbing. And uh, peace, peace will come into your soul. Now, this is from Anna Carter. This is great because uh, Anna said, learning every day. Did not know about the second-hand clothes. So, <laughs> won't do it anymore. Showed my autistic son this video and he sat and watched it and smiled. And uh, Anna wonders if he recognised the father. Sure. And then uh, somebody from the Armageddon Broadcast Network commented, Christ shall prevail, but one must follow and learn. I haven't followed the link on that. I don't know if he's talking about you or, <laughs> or the uh, um, free music says uh, free music tribe commented awesome type of video. That might be it. And John Lynch, yes, you, you say you love and, and miss miss you guys. We we hope your <laughs> your little piece of heaven has been restored. Where you are, let us know, and that all is well with you. And anyway, look, that's gone there. I think we should, um, if there's more comments, come in. You see, these are the edification for everybody that listens. And it is really like coming home after being lost all of your lives. And such is the, as Jesus, he said that uh, you cannot be a disciple of his unless you are a seeker of truth, capital T. A lot of people are, um, and I have said this before, truth even before love. You, it has to be the truth. Because, you know, the love is tough. Whoa. And we find that the rejection comes from those who are, um, it was said, you know, they have their religion, the book that everybody's trapped in, and they've failed to even sit around long enough to listen to what Yama has been saying now for more than 10 years. So, yes, the mm -hmm. reading of the comments and the emails, we'll do it daily as they come in, and it's for everybody's edification. All the work really has already been done. The videos, Yama's presentations, 10 years, 
And I think you can appreciate the hundreds of thousands of hours since really 1991 to first of all go through it all. Tell them how you started with um, mm. your, your nine by four foot board writing out the certain man verses. Did I? Mm. <laughs> well, I, what I did, I just had this... Um, 1991. Mm. I built an extension onto the house and made the back of the house just like a little paradise island. And um, this glass enclosure, and um, I just had a whiteboard which I would um, put various uh, explanations on, um, mainly on a scientific basis, uh, talking about the planets and distances and all that kind of thing. I'm talking about BC Canada, 1991, mm -hmm. you're a certain man. What about it? The 194 verses, you wrote them all out by hand. Mm, on your well, I forgot about that, you tell me. Well, you know, you're, <laughs> talk, you're, you're talking about the place on Nell Street, right? Here in yeah, Australia, oh, I'm talking about BC. Meant. No, just tell, that just oh. goes to show me you tuned oh. out. <laughs> um, I, I had to marry women that were uh, not worthy. And um, my second wife, uh, she actually was into uh, black witchcraft. And uh, anyhow, we ended up in Canada, and uh, I bought a computer, and um, uh, I had a Bible, King James Bible, and I thought, now, I've got to find the answer in this thing because it's all in numbers. So I started to um, look up the word certain, because it, particularly the Jews use it as a uh, way of not saying the word Jesus that certain man or that man certain, that kind of thing, it really aggravated me. And uh, I started to write out every verse I could find, and I think it was 194 verses. And as I was doing it, I was also marking the Lord in red and then the God in blue, so I could keep track of the numbers, so I'd work them all out. And um, there was 6,666 verses with the word Lord in it. And then uh, 387... Um, Eight, three, eight, three, eight, seven, 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 with the word God, and so also more than that, uh, four, 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 three, uh, in those three, eight, seven, eight, seven, seven verses. Right now, it turns out that I'm born into the maternity ward of uh, St Margaret's in Darlinghurst, Sydney. And it's the distance from the South Pole, and this is what it's all about. You've got to measure from uh, certain points. And the obvious ones are the North and South Pole, or the equator. So uh, it is uh, 3877 miles to the maternity ward. So that's the word God verse total, right? So it's all become pretty obvious. Anyhow, uh, as I'm writing all these things out, um, it was about 2.20 in the morning, and... Um, I was looking at different verses that had led to the final verse which said there are sort of evil men that are crept in unawares, unawares and taken over and that sort of confirmed. And if you read all the certains in, in order, it tells a story. And the story was that evil men had crept in unawares and taken over the translations and so forth. Oh, so um, I opened up the Bible which was the last one I looked at, uh, I think it was... Uh, Jude. Yeah, what, Jude. So um, at that led in the column led to another verse, which led to another verse, which I end up getting into the book of John. And in the book of John, it said in red letters, My father, his son, no, my father, his mother, and I are well pleased with you, and a place has been reserved in paradise for you from the beginning. As I said, I'd never read the Bible. Right? So I thought, well, that's unusual. So I went into my wife, and it was 2 or 2.20 in the morning or something. And it's like, usually it would be like uh, uh, waking a grizzly bear and it dead. Right? But to my surprise, she was quite pleasant. So she considers herself to be an expert in the Bible. So I said, gave her the Bible. I said, look at this. Do you know what that is? I didn't. No, there was such a thing in there like that. 
my son, his mother and I are well pleased with you and a place has been reserved in paradise for you from the beginning. Okay. She gave it back to me. I don't know what that is. So I read it again. Let me see it again, she says, so I give it to her again. She reads it again. She gives it back to me, I read it again. Let me see it again. So she reads it again. So she read it three times, I've read it now four times or more. When she gave it back to me, I was looking at it and it just vanished. The thing was gone. So we've got two witnesses here, you've got myself, and we've got her. That she read it out, and she saw it, and then she accused me of some sort of trickery. Bloody hell, you can't. So <laughs> and I said, it was almost, you know, it was an exasperation point. But the point is, that's what um, the kind of thing that I've experienced over the years that are um, to the point where there are eyewitnesses, she would later deny that that happened. And that is on the verge of strangulation as far as I'm concerned because she saw the truth, but by saying that she's making me out a liar, which I never lie, and um, she wouldn't say it because she feared, had a dread of going to lunatic asylum, which <laughs> Where she should be today, if I had more way. Right? That's the kind of thing I would have to put up with. Now, the point of all that is, that was the beginning of the decoding everything. The hand writing out on a board to, to, um, to, for our sake, get to the bottom of it all and to begin to reveal how everything is recorded within the creation. And uh, the more you reveal, the more you realise, oh my God, it is me. I mean, for the... For the longest time, probably you know, yeah. I was told I was Jesus when I was six years old, but that was Mary who told me that. But um, the things I've known all my life, as I said, I, could, I can't remember not being able to speak. And the Muslims are talking about that. Mm -hmm. It says that when Mary's baby son was born of Allah, of the Father, had no physical father, it was the, the divine thing, he was a soul of God, <clears throat> that he could talk from a baby. Well, I can assure you that um, I could talk at a very, very early age and I can't, and I can remember things from a very, very early age as if I was an adult talking to you today. Mm -hmm. I remember the birthing room, like a small baby. I remember it. So, you say, well, how can that be? Well, it's because I'm, I am who I am, right? Now, I defy anyone else to match which with me at any time without any subject. <laughs> But well, that's the kind of thing that my brother was aware of and that we talked about. And so at the very age that he had a chance to repent, he still wouldn't do it. I said, look, son, where you're going, it ain't going to be happy. Right? Same with his son, he ended up in hell as well. And my sister. And stepfather. One of the cruelest men you'd ever come across. He didn't think that he was my father. He was quite right. Matter of fact, as a child, I'd say to my mother, he's such a cruel, evil bastard. I said, Em, is there any possibility that I'm the doctor? <laughs> you were hoping. I was hoping. <laughs> <laughs> so it's been a bit of a rough go, but telling the truth all the time will also get you in a lot of trouble. Okay, I think... Um, but it, what was that wild stuff you just gave me? That right? was coconut water, babe. Oh, Usually it was mixed with something else, wasn't it? Like sewerage of some sort? <laughs> All right, Divine Destiny, we've got your latest comments on just uh, 55 minutes ago. Um, and that was from last night's DNA upload. Um, yeah. Now, um, uh, to, to the one called Lo-Fi News, uh, if you're listening, yeah, nobody's blocked you and as I said to you, responded that it was the first time I saw your comment and uh, that, um, that UFO phenomenon happened on the 1st of January and that was our, our only interest in that video that was yeah. sent to us. Because what, of what that lines up with is that the measuring from Jupiter, 88,888 miles wide, to Saturn and then from Mars and then the Earth to Venus to Mercury, then the Sun, um, 
The distance um, was, on the 1st of January of this year, to line up with that strange phenomena that happened in Jerusalem where this uh, flash of light come down and star drop down and all sorts of things happen. Um, that number is uh, the comfort. 38.75 astronomical units. And as I said before, just a reminder, an astronomical unit is the average distance from the Earth to the Sun. Yeah. Now, with all of these things going on, I mean, there's a, there's, there is a great deal of confusion over, you know, the source of these things. There's a lot of angelic things going on, yes, but there's also a lot of, uh, like, UFOs that are actually, you know, the dark forces are doing them, and, yeah, that, that, that we know about it. We don't pay a great deal of attention to what's going on out there. And the, the only thing that, when people bring them to our attention, is the time and the location, because then Yah can measure these things. And he, he might focus on something, but that's really the only, the only interest that we have in these things. Um, Andy, Elliot, you've said, if I am an American, am I the enemy of all people? No, you're not. Your leaders have been... Well, like some Bush, no. A Bush, a, 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 a Clinton, a Bar, a, a Obama, these abominations, they certainly have been, and even before then... Look, um, look, look to this fellow. Look at the 20th of March in 1991, what George Bush Sr. did. He mm. signed into law with seven rabbis standing around him, the Noahide laws, which means that because if you were a Christian and said that you love Jesus, that is a beheading offence. That's in your laws. You should get that to Trump to change it. That's what this bastard did. Oh, the Noahide laws are school. Right. Now, what of about? course, you've got Eisenhower. He was a bastard. Oh Monster my of God. a man. Monster of a man. And then you've got Harry Truman, who dropped the atomic bomb on Hiroshima, these innocent people of Japan. And it was a Jew sitting in the... Uh, it was all Jewish. Mm. It, it, everything about that atomic bomb was horrific. And they didn't in have to... Guy, it. it was a Jew sitting in a pilot. Uh, the co-pilot, I think. Co-pilot said, yeah. Yeah. Now, the, Lawrence, his name was. the point about that was that uh, Japan was already willing to surrender to the USA in March of that year. But because they wanted to find out what would happen, what would be the effects when they dropped this bomb mm. on Hiroshima and then Nagasaki... They didn't. They ignored the, the the surrender because they wanted to bomb. Can you imagine? Now this is all Jewish. These are all the schemes of the evil ones. That, that's Churchill the name. was a Jew. That's the name of the dark forces. You talk about dark forces. It comes from Talmudism, ancient. It comes from their doctrines, and this is the hidden hand. It's the hidden hand behind Obama. All right, give me another. George Bush Jr. His grandfather was Alistair Crowley. Crowley, Barbara Bush's father. Can you believe it? Wow. <laughs> Most evil man on the planet. He right. described himself as, which he was. He's into eating children and set child sex, of course. Now, um, so so Andy, for you, no, but your leaders have. And what you're but if you keep your yap shut, Andy, and don't go on and tell everybody what I've told you, then you are in a bit of a hot Yes, people, when they, they keep this to themselves, they become part of the problem. Now, um, and what has, been, what has happened is that your evil leaders have deluded the American population. How many of the Christians living with, in the USA support Israel because they think that it's the Israel... Yah has done videos on that about the, the one who is born once and the na it, it, it's, it's Yah himself. He is Israel. So if everybody were praying <laughs> for Yah, he'd have overthrown these dark forces long ago. But such is the rejection. Of course, the delusion and all prophecy does have to play out. Now, it was Lady... Um, uh, Dixia, you sent that video about Mariam from Iraq, this beautiful little girl who is so strong in her love and faith for Jesus as an Iraqi girl being mis displaced by ISIS. She even, she even loves ISIS. God will forgive ISIS. No, man. No. No, we're no in, chance. in the judgment. These people, they have offended the Holy Ghost. So, as, as beautiful... Now, 
imagine, it, imagine, imagine, imagine all of the people, the children themselves, the faith, the horrors that they have come through. The Christians in Syria, this is where Christianity began. If they all knew that God is here with them, he's been on their side. We sent to Bashir al-Assad, the Christ is back, he is with you. This was 2011, when it was never ever a civil war inside of Syria. It was the USA, Saudi Arabia and Israel. And England. For, and England, that paid mercenaries. These dudes, and it was all about uh, the oil, the gas, and destroying, of course, this Christian, the seat of Christianity. Now they have prevailed. Yah has been with them. Did, did the Assads know that? Again, we don't know. Did they get the message? We don't know. The same with Donald Trump. He has been chosen for this time now as Yah's man. Now, it is my uh, drive that he will get the message to finally, to finally acknowledge, because the message that was sent to him was that he could be the hero, but it is about Yar ascending. Not everybody else ascending to, to whatever. It's about Yar ascending to that position where he is recognized as the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. And then he as Can you imagine a man like Trump or Putin? What a weapon that is. Oh, totally. Like, I can talk for two or three days on the water. So <laughs> all you're going to do is just put it on Russian TV non-stop. And the same would you do with Trump, right? And that's it. All wars finish. He's here. And this is what the Zionists, the ones that call themselves Jews, are Jews desperately are. trying to stop. They've been... We shall forbid Christ, Protocol 14. Everything else is a distraction. Obama is an distraction. Obama knows that Christ is back. He responded to the information in 2010. And of course, he is preventing the information from going out. And he is a tool who is the devil himself. But he is a tool of the darker forces that are controlling him. And it is all about preventing Yar ascending from taking over. He takes over. You know, evil has done a wonderful job. Well, I've him. always said it's either that or I just outlive him more. Yeah, so, you know, the sooner he does take over, the sooner it all stops the insanity. And this was the but message But this is the year of the comfort. So, yeah. <laughs> all you people out there are coming in, you've been uh, led to find us, and now your job is to spread the word. Yeah. You can't sit on it. Yeah. And, you know, send links here, there and everywhere, just tell everybody. That's what the 144,000 do. They, and it's only today because it's been made possible through the technology and the internet, which is the information highway. And with that, we'll say... Hasta la vista, baby. And aloha again. I believe aloha is hello, goodbye and much love. <laughs> True. So, we'll be we'll back. we for holiday then. Tomorrow. Oh, we'll be going for holidays in every nation once the word is out and later gators.